Hello, today I'll be showing you a simple stylized shader that can get you started. Um, I'll be going through how to use the color object to drive each of these individual objects here for the colors uh, as a means to keep your shader tree rather simple. So let's begin. So firstly we want to create a shader and parent everything. I've already done that beforehand but just to show how to link everything you want to select your active object and then select everything with double A and control L to link materials and then it'll copy the materials throughout every single object as you can see stylized shader parent. It's also a good thing to name these objects or name these shaders and as you can see here it's labeled eight because eight of these objects are sharing this. One uh, of the most important node we need is something called an object info and this is done inside your shader graph. So we have our object info and there's a number of options here. Uh, the one that we want to use is color but just to show you what these other ones are if I go to viewport render and we use location <clears throat> each of these objects will change color based on its location. Now some of them are already colored and the reason for that is because our location has already been shifted so if we apply our location uh, so location, everything is centered to this point here. So if I move an object closer and away, you can see like it changes. Now this is a good way to drive shaders that require movement. So if you have something oscillating up and down, you can change it that way. We also have object index and material index. Now these are mainly used as switches. So for an example, if I have a uh, mix RGB, so zero to one, zero being white, and let's just actually just make this really evidential here. Okay, so let's say I want to use the object index, place that here, and surface, it should appear all red. However, if I go and click on this object here and pass index one, it'll be blue. And let's do that here too, blue. So what's happening is it's just basically acting as a switch because our factor or our mask goes from 0 to 1 and so this is just a hard value 0 1 0 1 you can kind of create complex switches this way it's the same thing with the material index the material index is found in your material setting settings pass index so if I put that here as an example 0 and 1 now each of these has its own purpose I personally like using object index because I like to instance my objects and you can't really do that with materials and random is just a random value seed this is great for as you can see here returning a number from 0 to 1 our decibel number and so you can get uh, nice iterations this is a great way to add some variation within your scene um, what we want is the color here and everything's gonna be white and the reason for that is because we don't have a color assigned to it yet the colors can be found in our object, properties, viewport display, right here, color. So you can see if I move that around, the color changes. However, we don't have to always go into our shader editor anymore. We're pretty much done here. We just select each object and we can start like changing colors. And I find this a really fun way to keep your shaders clean or your materials clean or your blender scene light. So we can play around with this kind of stuff here. So let's just do something quick like that, just as an example. And the reason why I like doing it this way is because it allows for really fast iterations. Hmm. Well, it looks like what we're missing right now is the fact that we have no shadows. It's only using the hard colors here. Thankfully, there's been like a lot of wonderful tutorials that taught me this, where you can use a shader to RGB and then color the shadows and mix that into the color. So let's do that right now. So we're gonna use a shader to RGB. As you can see here, there's an input requiring a shader. Now you can put any number of uh, shaders into here will give you different effects. But for this demonstration, let's use diffuse. And we can use the color. And the color of this will just be whatever that is. So if we put that over here, it's just gonna be simple, right? Like that. And the way we can break this up so if we put a color, uh, sorry, a uh, color ramp, and we put this in here, 
However, what this will do is it'll change the color to whatever our gradient here is. So it's like a gradient map in Photoshop. We've essentially changed it from this color, red, placed it in here to a monochromatic color now. So if we place this here, you can kind of see that it's all gray. If I bring this up and bring that down, there's no light in the scene. So if we add a sun, just to show an example of what's happening here, we now have color information. However, look at this. Once we bring this up and down, we can really manipulate the way it looks. And we can get somewhat of a more stylized look by manipulating these handles. Of course, this is not the only way to do it. We can use a constant if you want extremely harsh shadows, which are kind of gaining popularity, this kind of look here. Uh, you may notice that some of these edges are rather soft, and the reason for that is Eevee currently defaults to having soft shadows. <coughs> so if we take that off, we have this. Now you can see this kind of looks a little undesirable. And we can fix it up by increasing our cascade size quite a bit, like that. It's still a little funky at times, so there are ways to manipulate the shadow. We can go into the sun itself and play around with the shadow here. You can see we can take this off and take this on. Uh, we can change the biases, we can add contact shadows, we can change the cascade map count, as you can see here, change the fade, the distribution. These settings will be highly dependent, as you can see here, on your uh, stylistic look, or your object, or the scale of your object. So it's worth noting to play around with this these settings. So let's just see here, so you can see like the biases of the contact shadow. Anyway, this for me it looks kind of pleasant and workable. So when we go back to our shader by just like clicking any of the object here, we don't really need this there, so we can bring this up. Remember this is like changing the color of the diffuse, so it's always kind of nice to have it at a default value like that, because then it'll be easier to get a fuller range like this as you can see here and the cool thing now is like it's dependent on how your light source is so you can always try and get something interesting like this um, so the hard edges are cool however I kind of like always adding a little bit of a soft edge so I'm gonna go back here and let's just use a bit of an ease bring this up because I and that's what I like, this like soft thing. So this is highly dependent on the artist. So let's put that there. And if we put a gray, whoops, let's put a gray on this side. You kind of almost get like a neat comic book looking effect, which is something that I enjoy. So let's bring this down a little. Uh, let's pop it up like that. So you can see you get some of those nice core shadows. So let's bring this up slightly, and we can probably add a little bit of a darker value back into it. So we're just kind of like futzing it just slightly like that. There we go. So this is the kind of look I enjoy. And let's just smooth this out so we can see it a little bit more here. All right. So we've kind of constructed our color of our shader here, which is kind of cool. But we can make this a little bit more modular. So let's put this here. And we can group this up. And the reason for why I would rather have this grouped up is in case we change something, the consistency of the shadow will be throughout every single object. So to do that, we'll just select all these nodes, hit Control G, and now it's in a group. And there's the group input here. So what do we need this group input for? Well, these are the shadows, and we kind of need to mix the color in between the two. So we can do that by grabbing the group input and adding a mix RGB using this to drive the colors. So we'll put this here, put the group input here like this, mix, and we can probably try multiply just to see how that look and replace it like that. So now it's requiring two colors. So we want the first color to be what we need here. And you can see that's kind of looking super cool. Now we can use this for our shadow color. So you can see we can move this around and get some really cool looks, <coughs> excuse me, looks this way. It's kind of neat. 
Um, well, if we're not looking for something like this, you can see there's still some oddities we can fix here. So let's see what we can do. <laughs> if you want like a harsh line or a saturated line across certain edges, which is something I like to do, actually, let's just switch this around because I just noticed the lights backwards. So we're using this as a highlight. I think, let me see here. Is the light source? Yeah, we have the light source backwards. Let's put that like that. And then apparently with this one, we might need to invert it. Uh, oh, where did it go? Invert. Oh, no, that's <laughs> invert selection. Invert color. And I think that is what we're looking for. Yes, that's... There we go. <laughs> so what we need to do is just flip the settings around. So color to one, our color here. You can see here we can get more of the cool looking like this. And we go back in here. You can see here color two. We have to invert this also. It's going to be flipped around. Uh, you can also like invert this if need be. Uh, I just find this easier. And you never know, you might need to invert this back and forth. Um, and I talked about having, let's say, a saturated color here. We can do that by just going in here and inserting it in directly. So let's say if you wanted a nice, you know, like a saturated line like this, you can plug that into color two, like this, and you can get that like saturated line like that and you can change it this just adds a little bit more variation within your pieces let's see what we can do here uh, however not really needed so let's put that back here okay and let's remove that and bring that back like that so now you can see how this shader can work. So I can click on this, go into the viewport display, and just move this thing around. So let's go like blue, let's click on this, maybe like that, red, and then like that, and yeah. There we go. So hopefully you can have fun trying to create like really cool stylized looking shaders this way. This is just a bare basic of it. Like if you know how to undulate or sorry, modulate the shadows to appear differently, then that's that's how you can add on to this. All right. Thank you.